Personally, you know, I consider myself a family person first. Yes. Uh, mother, grandmother, great grandmother. I'm also a researcher and writer. Yes. Uh, and those are important to me too that I keep the scholarship going. So we're just going to walk and talk a little okay. bit. I remember when I first met you, I think I met you through email, and I was like, I got to meet her. She has <laughs> so, I think the knowledge that you possess is really, really cool. Um, tell me more about when was the Black Archives established? Horace Peterson was the founder of the Black Archives, and when he was in middle school, he started collecting buttons and brochures and storing them in the trunk of his car. And he would tell his friends that he was going to open a black museum. And they said, you're crazy. <laughs> and this is his dream. This was his dream. So uh, there's some amazing stories from his friends and about um, him climbing into windows in abandoned buildings wow. and gathering up with people they left behind. Wow. Um, so this is really a, a, a deep mixture of black life. Yes. yes, it's just, it's so interesting just to see black people, you know, yeah. um, and us give so the stories of black people. So of course it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, facility. Um, Another question is, what do you want people to understand about this beautiful museum? I want people to understand that um, everything in this building was given to us. These are the stories that people want to preserve. It's not like we have a, a set plan, an idea. Um, because black life is so expansive and there are so many histories, so many stories, and so many realities. We don't buy anything. Wow. Everything is donated to us by somebody who thought it was important. And they thought it was important to have to learn life in history. So that's what I'm proud of. This, uh, is, this is not on my notes, but name some of the people in here that people will be interested in just coming and learning about here. Well, you know, we had a um, we rent space here too. And yes. we had a family reunion here pre-COVID. Wow. And this 30-something smart aleck came up to me and said, I bet you never heard about the potato king. I said, I bet you not. Wow. You know, Miss Judy's Rose. He's wow. an important party. He came here with 60 cents in his pocket. Wow. And by the 1900s, he had a 25-room mansion, hot cold running water, and electricity. So that lets me know that anything you put your mind to do as a black person, you can do it because of all of these stories. That's right, that's right, all of these <laughs> stories. You know, and Leona Ponte Thurman was the first black woman to practice law in this area. Wow. Uh, you know, I love to show the little kids that when um, people would go to ball games, they'd dress up, they'd go after yes. church. Wow, yeah. Sandra Payne Stadium. Yeah, yeah, that's the truth. What has been one of the biggest challenges of the museum? 
But we're a nonprofit, so it's fun. Yes. Uh, always, we have a, a big facility here. There are a lot of moving parts, and it takes a lot of people to move those parts. Yes. So um, funding is essential, raising the money, keeping the money coming in, but also to make sure that if some kids, you know, want to see this place, that they can. Right. You know, so we want to be open. We want to be available. And we want to keep growing it. Uh, for me, it's to make this exhibition interactive. Yes. Uh, we have lots of young people who come here to visit, and they're very polite, every yes. one of them. But I know that this is not exciting to them. But it's history. It's it is, but they like lights, camera, and action. You know, we like So I, I, I need to make this interactive. Yes. I need to make it more uh, exciting. So that's part of your plan. That's okay. part of my plan. That's part of my vision. So what would you tell that young boy, that young girl, my age, uh, the next generation, mm -hmm. uh, what would you tell them about just coming here and where can they find you? Uh, we're here, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 5, uh, Saturday by appointment, so we're open most Saturdays, okay. uh, sometimes on Sunday. But I would tell people that no matter what your interests are, if you're an artist, an engineer, if you just care about grassroots people, if you want people to vote, whatever your mission is, whatever your passion is, you'll find something that fortifies what those things are good for. Perhaps. Well, we're going to take the camera code. We're just going to go around a little okay. bit, get, let them see a little bit more. I really do. You are first person I'm interviewing for the Black History Podcast. Okay. It's well, an honor. You. It really is. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Dr. Williams. <laughs> All right, so listen, y'all. As I was walking around, I noticed some cool stuff. Come on, let me show you. Let me show you. So, as you know, um, the Black Archives kind of let you know what kind of old buildings are still existing in Kansas City. Um, but if you come down there to 1855, you know where the Jew Castle is. So, all of this building right here is gone now. I'm gonna be probably gonna show it when he show you, but it still has some of the old buildings. So, I think you're gonna come here, you can see some of like the old buildings, there's still a couple there. Uh, they got Purcell High School, all of my Purcell people. Uh, just learning about those people. You can turn the video around, I'm gonna show you something. Shout out to my guy, Emmanuel Clear. So, it has all these cool people in here that you can learn about uh, so much history. You can't go, you don't know where you're going unless you find out your history, right? So uh, learn your history. Thank you, Black yes. Archives. Yeah. Peace. We've all been searching. I've been searching just like I know you've been searching.